Hi everyone, Eco Maine here again. We've got another webinar for you. This is for our towns that just give us trash. We did another webinar that was trash and recycling, and we're gonna do a third one that's just recycling. So maybe your town just gives us trash. This will be the one for you. Maybe your town just gives us recycling. The next one will be for you. And then the uh, if your trash gives, if, you, if your town gives us trash and recycling, like Portland, Gorham, Wyndham, tons of others, then uh, the first one is for you. So um, this is your Just Trash uh, webinar. And let me just share the screen with you. So here we go, the journey of your trash. Now, EcoMaine is a company in Portland, Maine. We're right around the corner from the airport and we take trash and recycling from around a third of Maine. That's around 400,000 people as far as population goes, which was pretty incredible. Uh, what we're gonna talk about today is the waste to energy facility, meaning we take your trash and turn it into electricity. We make a couple other things uh, while we're combusting or burning your trash, including ash like this and steam using pipes like this and then when you burn anything you make pollution so we'll talk about those three things that we create as well as a lot of other neat things today um, but i like to show this map first this is just where we are um, so a lot of towns just give us trash like kittery and gray um, and and many others um, and so uh, this is just our range geographically but first, before we talk about just trash, let's talk about what we throw away every day. Are we just throwing away trash? Are we throwing away some food uh, scraps? Maybe the tops of carrots when you're making a salad. Maybe your lettuce went bad in your fridge. Maybe part of your sandwich fell on the floor. Maybe uh, eggshells and, and banana peels. You know, there's, there's parts of food that we just don't eat or don't want to eat. Uh, we throw that out. We have things that are recyclable. Your paper, your plastic, your metal, your glass, and your cardboard. All recyclable. Maybe you throw those out. Maybe they'll go to a different uh, company or organization. Maybe your town doesn't recycle right now. Um, uh, and of course, we also throw out some reusable stuff. Unfortunately, um, we tend to throw away stuff and we say, well, I don't want this anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. Unfortunately, sometimes that getting rid of it ends up in the trash. So if it's still good, if it's still a thing that could still be used, then try and give it away to someone else, even if you yourself don't want it anymore. Uh, it could be an old shirt. It could be a book that you're bored of. It could be a, a water bottle that you just don't use anymore. You know, can you give things away if they're still good? And that way they can have a new life um, and you can be free of them. So we talked about the kinds of things that we throw away. Do those all go in one bin? Definitely not. And we want to definitely think about a couple things uh, before we even start throwing things out too. Uh, and one of them is reduce. Can we reduce our use of material or use less stuff first? So think about when you go to the grocery store, do you need to get all the grocery bags? Do you need to get all the produce bags and put your stuff in there? Or can you reduce your use of plastic or paper grocery bags by bringing in your own? reusable, I can wash it, I can bring it home, um, and, and then bring it to the store, you know, the next time I go. So I'm reducing the amount of bags that I get. Uh, if you ever have ever seen those really cool, neat, like mesh bags, you can put your apples or your uh, potatoes in there and then bring those home without using plastic. So again, you're reducing your plastic use. Um, things like chips. Can you buy a big bag and then put them in your reusable containers that you uh, have in your lunchbox every day? Or do you need to buy the teeny tiny little uh, packs with, that waste a lot of paper, uh, a lot of plastic? So uh, reducing your, your consumption of plastic packaging is huge. Even things like when you wash your hands, can you turn off the water whenever you're actually scrubbing them down for the 20 or more seconds? Um, you don't need to leave the water running. Um, the same with brushing your teeth. Can you turn off the water in between when you're actually brushing those teeth? So reducing is a wonderful first step. And then reuse. To reuse means to use something again. So think back to my water bottle. I can fill this up every single day, bring it home, wash it really good, fill it up, bring it back, use it all the time. I don't just throw it away in the trash can when I'm done with it. Same idea with my grocery store bag. Use it again and again and again and again and again. And also another really cool one. I've got this really fun set of utensils 
so I never have to use another disposable fork, knife, or spoon ever again. I put this in my bag, in my purse, my backpack, and I bring it with me wherever I go. And of course, I do need to wash it because we need to wash things that we use. Um, and uh, it's really neat. So to reuse uh, is wonderful. And again, I mentioned the book earlier, the shirt, you know, can you give things away so that other friends can use them goodwill? Salvation Army, a church sale, a yard sale, your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, anyone who can use something again is going to love whatever uh, is, is still good that's given away. The next one's recycle. So we mentioned your paper, plastic, metal, glass, and cardboard can go in the recycling bins. They go off to turn into really fun new things. Uh, can we recycle everything? No. But should we throw everything in the trash? Definitely not. So check out your recycling wherever you live uh, and see what kind of rules are around there. The next one is compost. No matter if your town recycles or not, takes all the trash or not, compost is huge. We would love you to compost if you're at all able to. Not everyone can, and that's quite all right. But if you can compost, that means you're turning food into soil. You're taking that food out of the trash can and putting it into the compost bin, whether it's a subscription service in your backyard, um, et cetera, and you're turning it into soil, and therefore you're not putting it in your trash can because food is, is juicy, it's wet. And does anyone remember what we do with your trash? We burn it. So when we're burning your trash, is your juicy lettuce that went bad and your juicy banana peels, is that really helpful for the fire or not as helpful? So we want to make sure that you compost if you are ever at all able to. There's, um, there's also one really fun way of composting. Say you don't have a backyard at all. There's verma composting. If you've never heard of it, check it out. It's composting with worms. So look up verma composting or composting with worms online. Pretty cool stuff, I think. And then the next one is what we're gonna focus on today. That's waste to energy, turning trash into electricity with the help of these cool pipes, which I'll tell you all about later. And again, of course, we are making ash and pollution, uh, but we do fun things with both of those things. So waste to energy is turning your trash to electricity. And then finally, speaking of this ash here, when you burn something, it doesn't just completely disappear, but it does get a much smaller. So when we reduce your size and volume of your trash by uh, about 90% down to around 10% left, we have to put that ash somewhere. And that ash goes to our landfill, which we also call an ash fill. Now, did you notice that this down here, waste energy and landfill is pretty small as far as the amount of green that's right there. There's a lot more green as you go up. So that's the kind of stuff that you want to do first, reduce first, reuse second, recycle third, compost, making sure that you are doing good things with your waste instead of just, well, I don't want it, I'm gonna throw it on the trash. Gotta think about it first. So pretty cool pictures here, um, thinking about reusing things and reducing as you go. Um, you know, who brings their own grocery store bag to the, bag, to the grocery store? Who brings their own water bottle when they go out to sporting events or school or work or anywhere? Who brings their own coffee mugs to get uh, hot chocolate or tea or coffee or uh, even a smoothie, which is really cool? Uh, who maybe brings their reusable uh, containers in their lunch sometimes, whether they can be plastic or glass? You know, that's a really fun way to reduce your plastic baggie use, your, your uh, your uh, paper bag use, all the kind of things that we just wrap our stuff in and then throw it away. You don't need that, that disposable stuff if you have your reusable containers. What about reusable straws? Does anyone ever use one of those? Those are really fun. Might, might be a nice birthday or Christmas present sometime. Um, and then of course, if you can, try to avoid buying fruits and vegetables or other things uh, in packaging if you don't need it to be packaged. Um, because you uh, will just throw that away when you get home. That packaging is not recyclable, especially if the bottom is styrofoam. Styrofoam is a really lightweight product, it's like a feather. And we just can't recycle it. So if you're, if you're say your, let's say kiwis are packaged in plastic wrap with styrofoam underneath, both of those things have to be thrown away in the trash can after you bring home and eat your kiwis. So try to avoid your packaging whenever possible. It's not always easy. And then there's just a couple of fun examples over here. There's a uh, mailbox made out of your license plates that you don't use anymore. And then here's a cool garden that goes up and down. 
instead of side to side, made out of what does it look like? Soda bottles. So that's a pretty neat. Elf. So reduce, reuse, and then recycle. So let's check out this really cool graphic. So if I need to make paper, where do I go? I go to the trees, I gotta cut them down, gotta put them on the truck, bring them to the facility or the, the building where the paper is made, and then it comes to me. And I use it, um, let's say I get a magazine in the mail. Well, when I'm done reading that magazine, I'm gonna try putting it in the trash can. While the truck picks it up, it brings it to EcoMain, it does combust or burn it, but then it goes to the landfill after that. Now, now that paper is now burned or combusted or, or, and turned into ash, and now it's at the landfill. But question, I need to make more paper, so where do I go? Well, I have to go back to the trees. Cut them down, make the paper, I'm gonna use it in whatever way I'd like, and then I'm gonna put it in the trash can. The truck picks it up, it goes to the landfill, that stuff is stuck there now, so huge, huge bummer. But now let's try recycling. We need some trees, we cut them down, we make the paper, we use it whatever way we'd like, we recycle it, let's try that. It comes to us, we sort it out, or it goes somewhere else that gets sorted out, goes off to make new paper, and then it comes back to us in a new form. And it goes off to be recycled, comes back in a new form. So it's really cool, right? We're not always going back to the trees. So we need to try as much as possible to recycle anything that we can, anything that our town or our, our um, school or our business or anything that we can um, to, to make sure that those materials are saved. Because the cool thing is, if you recycle, you can turn things into new things. So for example, um, a playground could be made out of old milk jugs and soup cans and aluminum cans. Uh, your shoes could be made out of plastic water bottles. I mean, maybe you didn't even know that. So maybe some toys are made out of milk jugs too. Sunglasses can be made out of recycled plastic, shirts, carpets, all kinds of stuff can be made out of recycled things. Uh, there's a neat bicycle company who makes bicycles out of recycled aluminum and other metals and cork recycled things, so pretty neat. Um, and there's a water bottle company called Liberty Bottle Works that makes their water bottles out of recycled aluminum too. And then the weirdest thing I wanna make you think about today is recycled paper, toilet paper. Just think about it. Would you rather have toilet paper made from trees that we had to cut down and take homes away and take oxygen away? Or would you rather have recycling to your paper being cleaned and turned into toilet paper? Don't cut down the forest, pretty cool. Think about it. And of course, for more of what, what we do as far as our single sort recycling goes, uh, when that comes to us, check out our other webinars on ecomain.org. Um, they're really fun, I promise. And of course, food is not garbage. So if you can ever, ever compost it, because otherwise we burn it as trash. So your food isn't garbage. It's a cool resource that can be used over and over again to make new soil, to grow your new favorite plant, your strawberry plant, your daffodils, your maple trees, all the plants that you might love. So let's get down to it. Anything you don't reduce, reuse, recycle, or compost is trash. It goes into our building. Here's a really cool big truck. Think of like a truck that picks up your trash maybe, and he drives into the large opening in our building right here. He backs up, he dumps it off, and then he leaves to go pick up more trash. That trash eventually is picked up by a giant claw, which I'll show you a video of in a minute, and it's burned. And we burn it for four hours, we cool it off for four hours in its ash form, and then it goes to the landfill to, cool, uh, to, uh, to stay there forever. So we don't do anything with the ash once it gets to the landfill. And we'll talk about our landfill too later. Here's the inside of the tipping hall. So again, trucks drive in there, they back up to one of the big doors. Uh, you might notice that there is a opening here. That is where the trash is pushed through using a front loader, which I'll show you a video of. And you might see a couple claws here. That's our giant crane or claw that comes down to pick up the trash, which is really neat. So here is that front loader at work. There's a lot of bags and a lot of trash over here. This is the room where it's all stored. And you might also notice that this trash is steaming. We actually pull that from the landfill. Sometimes we put trash there to hang out for a little while until we can bring it to our building. And then right here, you see the claw coming down. He's going to pick up 
a lot of trash, probably two to four thousand pounds worth of trash in one breath. Pretty incredible. There you go. So you push this morning. And all that trash will be picked up by the clog right away. So here's the inside. If we were outside watching that video, we're turning around to the inside of that room to see what the trash bunker or trash storage room looks like. And it's around 4,000 tons of garbage uh, or about maybe a week's worth of trash that comes to us from all of our towns. So if we weren't to touch it and no claws and, and not pick up any of it all, at all, it would take about a week to fill that thing up. So we do constantly pick up um, your trash from this room. And we are running 24 hours a day, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, so we're running all day and all night too. So here's a diagram or a picture of what is really happening in our building. And um, I showed you kind of the short version of the trash comes to us, we burn it, it's ash, it goes to the landfill. Here's a much longer version, which has all the cool details on it. So you and I make trash, whether we are at school, at home, we go to the supermarket, we go to a soccer game and there's a trash can there. If you put stuff in the trash can, it comes to us. Well, that trash goes on a truck, the truck drops it off, it gets shoved into the big, big room, and then the claw picks it up, brings it up to the sixth floor, all the way up, brings it over, and then drops that trash into what I like to call a slide or a hopper. It leads the trash by gravity, it falls down into the fire, and it burns there for four hours. That ash falls down, and cools off for more, for more hours, because we don't want 18 to 2,000 degree ash going on a conveyor belt going to the truck, because here's the truck. So we got to cool it off between here and here. So once it's on that conveyor belt, that conveyor belt is shaking to make a nice thin layer, because there's a really neat magnet right around here that picks up any, any metal, any ferrous metal, and throws it in a bin while the ash falls straight down. So metal goes over here to be recycled, ash falls down, and the ash goes to the landfill, which is only three miles away from our building. So not very far to travel at all. So ash is one thing we've made. The next one is steam. Steam is created using the heat from the fire, because fire is very hot. We have one wall, two walls, but then we have actually two fires, not just one. So Fire and two walls plus fire and two walls equals four walls. And within those four walls, we have nice thick pipe. Check that out. Nice thick, it's actually really, really heavy. And that pipe is running through all the walls of the boiler, which is the room where the trash burns. The fire heats up water that's actually running through in the inside of those pipes. And does anyone know what really, really, really hot water creates? Starts with an S, steam. So steam is then pushing something called a turbine. So pushing that steam through a turbine. But this is not very helpful. So what do we do? We connect, connected that turbine to a generator. So while the steam is pushing the turbine, it's also turning a generator. And the generator, generator creates electricity. So we're making electricity off of your trash while we're making it much smaller and only a little bit's going to the landfill instead of all of it's going to the landfill. So I think those are two really cool, really positive things. Now we are making some pollution because anytime you burn anything from a campfire to a bag of trash, you're going to make pollution. So we don't want to put that out in the air, do we? We treat that in one, two, three, four different ways before we test it here at number five. And then that goes out the stack to be <sighs> released and it's 96% water vapor <sighs> at that time. Isn't that neat? So right here at one, let's get some details. The nitrogen oxides are taken out by urea. It's a chemical reaction when the two come together and the nitrogen oxide is really bad and dangerous and unsafe to be outside. But when we spray that urea in, it turns it into something okay and safe and normal to go outside. Number two, the gases keep going to get to number two. We're spraying something called activated carbon to take out the mercury and uh, dioxin furans. Also, 
bad things that we don't want outside. So what do we do? We spray in something called activated carbon to connect to the outside of the molecules or the, the pieces of, of mercury. And instead of being nice and light and happy and going out, it actually it's heavy. It falls down to right about here. And we'll talk about that in just another minute, or what happens to it. Everything else continues on to number three. That's where we're spraying in the lime slurry. Lime slurry is a basic compound, meaning when it reacts with an acidic compound, which is the sulfur dioxide and other acidic gases, when they come, come together, they actually neutralize, meaning they don't completely disappear, but again, it goes from really bad and unsafe to okay and totally safe to go outside. So all that stuff continues up and then down, and then through this thing called the electrostatic precipitator. You wanna try saying that? Electrostatic precipitator. The electrostatic precipitator has six curtains. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll show you a picture of those curtains near the end of the presentation. Uh, they're way bigger than you might even think they are. They're enormous. They need a crane to actually pick them up and put them into the, the part of the building right here. So those curtains are actually charged, meaning they are attracting the particulates to them. And particulates are things that you and I don't want to breathe in. Think of a volcano erupting. That black smoke. That black smoke is made of particulates, which are teeny tiny little things. So when we burn trash, we also happen to make black smoke, which are made of particulates. So we are removing all of those particulates that we possibly can. Now the curtains can't last forever because eventually they get really tired because ugh, all those particulates are on them. So what do we do? We hit them, we wrap on them, particulates fall down and guess where they fall? Right about here to meet up with the mercury and dioxin furans. And then they're kind of blended in a cement mixer type machine. And then all that stuff gets mixed in with the bottom ash, which is the ash that we burn down here. So everything's mixed together and then it goes to the landfill. So it's actually stuck in there. It can't get out. It's not reacting with the light or the air or the water or anything. Um, and it is going to the landfill to sit there forever and ever. So that is what is happening to our, uh, our material in the facility. And then number five here, we can't forget that. That's where we test for pollution. So we're making sure that the air that we're putting outside is clean. Because if it's not, well, that's not good for the environment. It's also uh, cost us a lot of money if we were to uh, put out dirty air. So we're a nonprofit, so we're focused really, really well on making sure that we're keeping the environment clean, not just making enough, uh, as much money as we can. So um, clean air is really important to us, so we make sure that we are constantly, 24 hours a day, every single second, monitoring what's happening with the air that goes outside so it's clean enough. So here's some really neat pictures and videos of what we've been talking about so far. Any guesses as to what this is? It's that claw that picks up that trash. So if you've ever played that game with the teddy bears and the other things at the arcades, it's kind of like that game, except this guy always wins because he always picks up trash. And you might notice that he just dropped it. Well, why did he do that? He's giving it more oxygen. So by aerating it, he breaks things apart and that gives things more surface area, meaning there's more to burn on any given piece. Um, and so it actually makes it easier to burn. So he can drop it sometimes, he can mix it up. And you might also notice that there are openings here and here and here. That is where the trash is pushed in by that front loader. So here he comes up, up to the sixth floor. I, right now, am standing in the crane cab, meaning that is where the person is controlling the claw. So we have one that's controlled by hand and one that's controlled by a machine that can say, okay, this is what I want you to do, go. And so we have two claws because we have two slides, two fires, two pollution controls, and then one stack. Question for you, what does this look like to you right here? You said cardboard, you're right. So where does cardboard belong? Does it belong in the trash? You can either reuse it, make a cool fort, send another um, present in it in the mail, you know, you reuse it as a, a shipping box, or you can recycle it. So cardboard should not be in the trash. 
And here is your trash because what do we do? We burn it. So we take your trash and we combust or burn it at around 1800 degrees. Very, very hot. Where I'm standing to take that video is right here. There's a little window. It's very, very thick glass and I'm looking at the fire. Now, if you notice that there are some lines on the walls here, any guesses as to what that is? And then of course, everything's being burned to turn into ash to then go downstairs to be cooled off, to then go on the conveyor belt and then up the hill past the magnets. So again, what are we creating here? We're creating ash. We are reducing our trash size by at least 90% and then putting that in the landfill. Uh, we're therefore making less pollution at the landfill. No methane is created, no pollution at all is created at the landfill, uh, and we're using up a lot less space. Um, it's going to cost around or at least $25 million to cap or close our landfill that we currently have. We're thinking about the year 2045 as around the time that will happen uh, when we're thinking it might fill up. But of course, if you reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost as much as you can, you'll make the trash a lot smaller and therefore we can go a lot longer uh, with, our, with our landfill because $25 million is a lot of money. And should we use your soccer fields or... Uh, your mall or your local swimming pool to be your, our next landfill? No, we no, you know, nobody wants that. So try and filling up landfills as slow as possible means we have to find less landfills in the future. Here's that absolutely enormous magnet. Here it is up taking metal out and this is it on the ground just to show you kind of a scale of size. It's quite large um, and then it takes out around 24,000 pounds of metal every day or around 12 tons. So a lot is taken out. And that's really cool because that means metal is not going to landfill and sitting there forever and ever and ever. The only thing is that we take out the ferrous metal, meaning if you could attach a magnet to your soup can or your other containers and it doesn't fall off, that means it's ferrous. If you take your aluminum foil or your seltzer can and you try to attach that magnet to it, it's going to fall off every time. That means it's non-ferrous. They have two different types of materials in them, um, and so this only takes out the ferrous, unfortunately. But everything in the ash form goes to the landfill. You might see that steaming here. It was a chilly day when we took this picture, and the ash was still a little bit warm. Remember, we do cool it down a lot. But you might see there's lines here. That's the special stuff called landfill lining. See how thin it is? But it's incredibly strong. You can't tear it. It's really hard to puncture, meaning you put a hole in it. So there's this stuff, and then there's layers of sand, gravel, and clay underneath. So that we're making sure we're not just dumping the ash right on the ground, on the earth, and then that's going into the earth. We don't want that, and uh, landfills are not uh, supposed to do that. So we are very, very, very much making sure that we're constantly uh, monitoring the landfill and making it right the right way um, the, the, the first time so that we don't have a lot of problems in the future with uh, uh, groundwater problems and other things. So one cool thing about our landfill, or actually a couple of cool things about our landfill, is that we are not making any methane at all because when you burn or combust trash there's nothing for uh, to create methane and methane is a really toxic really dangerous gas that is made uh, whenever um, what we call organic material or natural stuff kind of breaks down inefficiently so if you were to put your banana peel in a whole trash landfill and your eggshells and your old bread and your old sandwich um, that fell on the floor, if you were to put all that stuff in the, in the whole trash landfill or a regular landfill where they don't burn it, um, that would then cause methane to be created over time, which is not good. Another cool thing is that we are making that electricity. Uh, so we are making electricity with the pipes and the steam turbine and the generator. So all good things there. And we're also recovering metal, meaning we are picking up that metal and throwing it into the recycling bin, and that's going off to be recycled. And also we're saving emissions, um, meaning we're saving gas and, and uh, fossil fuels because we're not trucking our trash long distances. We're trucking it three miles away, which is pretty incredible. 
We also have a wetland treatment system uh, as well as a wetland a, uh, water retention pond that we pump out to the Portland Water District to be treated. So any water that runs off of our landfill is treated either naturally or man-made. Uh, so we're making sure that everything at the landfill is very safe um, from, from environmental harm. Really cool thing in our landfill that we were doing uh, quite a few years ago from 2011 or to 2015 was a metals mining project. So we are taking even more metal out of the landfill and then recycling that, uh, which is really, really incredible. When we were done with that whole process, I believe we took out around 38,000 uh, tons of metal and that cost, uh, that saved uh, or made about $750,000 in revenue, meaning we were able to sell off that recycling to recycle it and we also made a lot of space on the landfill, which is, uh, has a monetary value as well, because then we're able to, to free up some more landfill space. So here's a couple cool pictures from that. We excavated or dug stuff out because we wanted to remove uh, the metals from it, and we found some pretty interesting uh, things. This is a newspaper from 1992. And let's pretend that uh, we are now in the year 2012, whenever this project was going on. That's 20 years that this newspaper was sitting in the landfill. And it kind of just looks like someone just poured a big cup of water on it. It doesn't look like it's breaking down much at all. Um, so stuff in a landfill, in a regular landfill, is not breaking down uh, really at all. Here's a Prince tape, if anyone likes the band Prince, pretty amazing. Um, and then of course, here's just a lot of plastic bags that again, didn't break down whatsoever. There's a spam container and a sock and a tarp and some other packaging, maybe an aluminum can right here, maybe some more cloth. So this stuff again is not breaking down, it's not going anywhere. You can even read the words on this bag or, or, or box or whatever that is. Ruffles potato chips, they found a bag of Ruffles potato chips with the chips still inside them. Yes, they were all crushed, but they still looked and probably smelled like Ruffles potato chips, which is pretty creepy. So nothing's breaking down. And here's another example, that's a chicken breast. So a piece of chicken was in a package, they took it out and they said, huh, this still looks like chicken. Ew. That's about 20 years that it's been sitting in the landfill. And again, it's not going anywhere. So we need to try and reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost if we ever can. Because this is what that whole trash landfill looks like. It draws in pests. There are fires that can occur. There's no pollution controls there. Um, it creates methane. It gets very, very filled up very, very fast because it's not being put in just a little bit at a time. So landfills, uh, you know, we want to try and reduce the amount of stuff that goes in them no matter what we do. Another thing we make is steam. So remember, we're using those pipes to make the steam, to turn the turbine, to turn the generator, to make the electricity. Here's a picture of those pipes here. All those pipes have water running through them, and we are using that heat to make the steam. Because remember, there should be fire right in the middle of the page here. But we are cleaning this out, which we do every year just to make sure everything runs well. Here's what we call the turbine deck. That is where the turbine is being turned at around 3,500 uh, 3, rotations per minute. So way, way, way fast. And that is enforcing the uh, generator to turn. Here's the inside of that turbine, which is pretty cool looking. And then here's the inside of the inside. So again, you can maybe um, imagine pushing steam through here to make it turn really, really, really fast. And of course, we're making a lot of electricity. We use 10 to 15% in our two buildings that we uh, run, our recycling building and our trash building. We run the lights, the phones, the security, uh, the computers, everything with the electricity that we make at our building. So that's the trash building and the recycling building. We also run our two electric cars. So we run four different things using 10 to 15% of the, the electricity that we create. The other 85 to 90% goes off to the grid. So it's possible the house that you're sitting in right now is powered by trash, which is, I think, pretty cool. And we do consider it a renewable resource because even if we all make five pieces of trash every year, well, that's still a lot of trash that we're making combined. So we're always gonna have trash, even if we make it really, really a small amount. 
um, and we're also making electricity out of it, so we consider it to be a renewable resource because we always have trash. So here's a little summary of that. Uh, we take all of this material here and turn it into this tiny bit of ash and make all this electricity here. And of course, we are making the gross toxic gases, but wait for it. We treat them in multiple different ways. So the urea is sprayed into the fire, which is in this part. The carbon injection is sprayed into the, what we call the reactor, which is this part down here at the bottom. The lime slurry is sprayed in up here to take out the sulfur dioxides. This big thing is the electrostatic precipitator. And then in between the electrostatic precipitator and the stack, that's where we're testing everything all the time. We definitely win awards or, of, or certificates for how uh, well we're managing our environment um, and making sure that everything, both for the environment and for the workers who uh, work with us, are completely safe. So uh, we're very proud of the fact that all three of our facilities have these really neat um, certificates that we win based on how good that we're being with our, our waste and our pollution and everything. So I'd like to show this one example of just how good we are. You might see that there's a red line here and then an even lower red line here. Well, that is the limit. That's the highest amount of pollution that we can put out. And this pollution happens to be lead, which again is not something that we want outside. The limit is here. Even at our highest point, we didn't even reach it. And then we installed some new upgrades, some new, new machines, new software things, and we've gotten lower and lower and lower. And then here's last year. So very, very, very low, nowhere near the amount. So I like to say we're allowed to emit a bit, we emit a tiny bit. Here's that picture of the electrostatic precipitator. Remember that's the curtain that's uh, uh, bringing the particulates to it by being charged. And this is a crane here, so large it has to be picked up by a crane and here is the curtain. So a very large piece of equipment doing a very um, important work. And then here is the computer screen where they are watching the, uh, uh, the curtains. We call them the precipitator curtains. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And they are just making sure that they're not getting too full. If they do, what do they do? They wrap on them, particulates fall off, and they start over, keeping everything safe. So in summary, if we take your trash and we take out anything that could be reused and give it away to someone else or use it ourselves, if we take out all the recycling and put it in a recycling bin or take it to a recycling facility or somehow recycle it, even if it's just your cans and bottles, great, recycle that. If you take out all your compost, all your food from your trash, put it in a compost bin um, in some way, make sure that it doesn't end up in the trash, we'll have a much healthier environment. We'll use a lot less natural resources to make new things because paper comes from trees. But if we recycle it, then we, uh, we don't need to, to do that. So um, we will also actually spend a lot less money if we reduce and reuse and recycle and compost um, because trash is, is expensive. And occasionally recycling is expensive too, but it's definitely the right thing to do. So reduce, reuse, recycle whenever you can. Um, and with that, that is the end of our little session today. If you have any questions, we would love to answer them. You can email info at ecomain.org um, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. About four people get that email and we'll all work hard to, to um, answer it and get the answer back to you. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a really great day and, uh, and have, a, have a good one.